In the series of videos of World Secret Agencies and its operations, this would be our first video on FSB, the Russian Intelligence Agency. The Federal Security Service or FSB's headquarters is located at Moscow, Russia. Alexander Bortnikov heads the FSB. Bortnikov has been in the role since May 2008, and he is a former KGB officer who has held various positions in the Russian security services throughout his career. The first operation. Operation Bagration was a Soviet offensive operation during World War II that began on June 22, 1944. The operation was launched to clear German forces from Soviet territory and open the way to Berlin. The operation was named after General Pyotr Bagration, a hero of the Napoleonic Wars. It was planned by Soviet General Georgi Zhukov and led by Marshal of the Soviet Union Alexander Vasilevsky. The operation involved a massive assault on German Army Group Center, which was stationed in Belarus. It was preceded by a deception campaign to mislead the Germans about the Soviet intentions. The Soviets deployed over 2.3 million soldiers, 6,000 tanks, and 5,000 aircraft for the operation. The initial phase of the operation saw the Soviet forces break through the German front lines and encircle several German units. The Soviet forces then launched a series of simultaneous attacks to prevent the Germans from regrouping. The Soviet forces attacked along a 600-kilometer front from the Baltic Sea in the north to the Carpathian Mountains in the south. The Germans tried to mount a counteroffensive but were unable to halt the Soviet advance. The Soviet forces advanced rapidly, liberating Minsk, the capital of Belarus, on July 3, 1944. The operation destroyed most of Army Group Center, which was reduced to a few scattered units. The operation was one of the largest and most successful Soviet offensives of World War II. It is estimated that the Soviet Union suffered over 178,000 casualties during the operation. The Germans suffered over 300,000 casualties and lost thousands of tanks and other equipment. The operation paved the way for the Soviet to advance into Eastern Europe and ultimately to Berlin. The operation was notable for its speed, scale, and effectiveness, as well as the innovative use of combined arms tactics. By this, Soviet Union regained much of the territory it had lost to Germany in 1941. The operation ended on August 29, 1944, after the Soviet forces reached the Vistula River in Poland. The second operation. Operation Anadir began in July 1962 and was a top-secret Soviet operation to install nuclear missiles in Cuba. The operation was launched in response to the deployment of American Jupiter missiles in Turkey, which were capable of striking Moscow. The Soviet Union wanted to balance the strategic situation by stationing missiles in Cuba, which could target most major American cities. The operation was headed by Soviet General Issa Plyev, who was tasked with coordinating the deployment of troops, weapons, and equipment to Cuba. The first phase of the operation involved transporting missile components and launchers to Cuba via sea and air routes. To conceal the operation, Soviet ships were camouflaged and sailed under the guise of transporting civilian cargo. The United States detected the Soviet deployment through spy planes and reconnaissance satellites and began monitoring the activity. President John F. Kennedy was briefed on the Soviet activity on October 16, 1962, and ordered a naval quarantine of Cuba to prevent further Soviet shipments. The United States demanded that the Soviet Union remove the missiles from Cuba, and a tense standoff ensued. As the crisis escalated, Soviet ships carrying missiles approached the American blockade, and there were fears of a military confrontation. The Soviet Union had also sent over 40,000 troops to Cuba to protect the missile sites and train Cuban troops. After several days of negotiations, the Soviet Union agreed to remove the missiles from Cuba in exchange for a U.S. pledge not to invade Cuba and to remove U.S. missiles from Turkey. On October 24, 1962, Soviet ships stopped short of the U.S. naval quarantine line, and Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev sent a letter to Kennedy, proposing a peaceful resolution to the crisis. In the letter, Khrushchev agreed to remove the missiles from Cuba 
if the U.S. guaranteed not to invade Cuba and removed its missiles from Turkey. Kennedy responded by calling for a private meeting between U.S. Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy and Soviet Ambassador Anatoly Dobrynin to discuss a possible resolution. On October 28, 1962, Khrushchev announced that the Soviet Union would remove the missiles from Cuba. In exchange, the U.S. pledged not to invade Cuba and to remove its missiles from Turkey within six months, but this latter agreement was kept secret. The crisis officially ended on October 28, 1962, when the Soviet Union began dismantling the missile sites in Cuba, and the U.S. lifted its naval quarantine. The Third Operation Operation Successor was the code name for a series of covert operations conducted by the Russian Federal Security Service in the early 2000s. The operations were related to the transfer of power from Russian President Boris Yeltsin to his chosen successor, Vladimir Putin. The operations were designed to ensure a smooth transition of power and to prevent any attempts to disrupt the process. The operations were headed by FSB Director Nikolai Patrushev and were carried out in secret. The FSB conducted surveillance of key political figures and worked to neutralize any potential threats to the transfer of power. The FSB also worked to discredit opponents of Putin and to manipulate public opinion in his favor. The operations were seen as successful as Putin was able to assume the presidency without any major incidents. The operations were controversial as they involved the use of FSB resources and personnel for political purposes. Some critics accused the FSB of playing an inappropriate role in the transfer of power. Putin's rise to power marked a significant shift in Russian politics and foreign policy. Putin sought to restore Russian influence in the world and to assert Russian interests on the global stage. Putin's presidency has been marked by a tightening of control over the media and civil society in Russia. Thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe to our channel.